Occupational English test. Practice test. Listening test. This test has three parts. In each part, you'll hear a number of different extracts. At the start of each extract, you'll hear this sound. You'll have time to read the questions before you hear each extract, and you'll hear each extract once only. Complete your answers as you listen. At the end of the test, you'll have two minutes to check your answers. Part A. In this part of the test, you'll hear two different extracts. In each extract, a health professional is talking to a patient. For questions one to twenty-four, complete the notes with information you hear. Now look at the notes for extract one. Extract one, questions one to twelve. For questions one to twelve, complete the notes with a word or short phrase. You now have thirty seconds. To look at the notes. Good to see you again. Good to see you. And we have already we have already gone through your history and physical. We decided that you are a good candidate for doing the you know, myelial fixation, yes. SI joint fixation. That yes. should help you a great deal. That you don't need the fusion, and that we don't need to do a pure formless release. So I think we're ready to then to go ahead and proceed with that if you're ready. Okay. Well, I have done a little bit of studying upon mm -hmm. this, and uh, I've got some questions. I wrote some questions down, um, and I would like you to. If you could explain the surgery to me, exactly what I will be going through and what you'll be doing to me. Sure. Um, the first thing that we're going to do is you're going the morning of the surgery. You're going to go to the preoperative area, mm -hmm. and in the preoperative area, Vicky comes in the morning of the surgery as well as I do too, of course. But she is going to manipulate you and make sure that you feel good and that you're in in alignment, in good alignment. Then you're going to be taken to the surgery suite itself and you'll be on the gurney uh, in the surgery suite, and we will put you to sleep there. Mm -hmm. um, you also get IV antibiotics at that time, and at that time they'll set you up for the neuromuscular monitoring. They'll put little needles, and they are little, okay. and of course near sleep also anyway, but they'll put small <laughs> needles in all the, all the muscles so that during the surgery we can monitor that to make sure we're not near a nerve root. Uh, and then after that we will roll you into a prone position. The surgery is done with you on your stomach, so you'll be on chest rolls. Then we're ready. And then we'll go ahead and prep the, uh, uh, your back and, uh, uh, and proceed with surgery. Now you're having a fixation only, and what we will end up doing is putting two screws on each side. And the way that I determine where to put the screw in is first with an 18 gauge needle and then under the C-arm. I didn't mention earlier, of course, we have you on the position so that we can use uh, C-arm, which is for x-rays, a fluoroscopy, okay. so that we can look through and see the bones. We'll stimulate the, the uh, pin and then we'll see if we get a response from the muscles. And if we do not get a response, we stimulate up to 20 milliamp level. If we do not get a response uh, at about 50 milliamp level, we're, we're usually very happy with that, even if we get a little response later on. But that makes sure that we're not close to the nerve roots, which are down here. Now, after we have the pin and the pin, we're happy with that, with the positioning on x-ray, as well as with uh, the lack of response on the stimulation, then we'll get a screw, a titanium cannulate screw, and put that over that guide pin, and then literally put it into the bone, screw it into the bone okay. and compress it. So, and then after we have the screw in, and usually I'll use 35 millimeter length screws most of the time. Um, after we have the screw in, we'll test it again by stimulation to see mm -hmm. if there's response on the muscles. And again, if there isn't, um, then we're happy with that. And then that's the finish, the first Do you one. ever have to um, reposition a pin or we move do. a pin Sometimes out? We do. Sometimes if, we're, if we get, start getting response about 20, 10 milliamps or below that, we're certainly going to reposition okay. it. So we're happy with the first one. 
and then we put in a second one, which is essentially parallel, usually a little bit higher, uh, pretty much parallel to the first one. And that's actually the end of the procedure. Well, now, mm -hmm. after this, how long am I going to be in the, um, in the hospital? You'll be in the hospital if, uh, if you're local, we'll keep you overnight. Okay. Okay. Now, what about my short-term restrictions right, right after surgery? Uh, in the immediate period after the surgery now, we are going to limit your activity. We do want you to be active. We do want you to walk. Okay. But we want you to limit the prolonged standing or limit the prolonged walking to about 30 minutes. Can you go up and then all or like once a day? Or? You can. Okay. You can. You, you, you really will let you do what you really need to do. Okay. But just kind of be careful in doing it. Okay. The other thing we want you to not do is do any repetitive bending over. Uh, repetitive extending, okay. which is really similar to most back problems. Now, what about my long-term restrictions? Long-term, as we talked about before, no bungee jumping. I you know, promise like not to. <laughs> okay. And then, but, but more, more significantly, even you don't want to do things that are going to be jarring to the back. Um, specifically, um, even stair climbing or the stair, not stair climbing, but the stair master type of uh, oh, okay. aerobic exercises. Um, it would not do that. I think swimming would be much better. What about yoga? Because I've done yoga for years. Um, yoga, if you avoid the extremes of it, mm -hmm. um, you can do the yoga. I, I don't yoga do the extremes fine. of it. My body won't do the extremes of it. Um, mm -hmm. What about, I was curious about the screws. Do they ever work their way out? No, they don't. Um, there is a possibility they could possibly become loose, but really we've not had that problem either. The, the screws are made of titanium, and the titanium really attracts the bone to grow right up to it, much more so than stainless steel. Um, and so they're, they're not going to work their way out on their own. Now, is there a difference between a fixation and a fusion? There is a difference. You're just going to have the fixation. Okay. And that's good. That's so, good to know. So these are really two different things. That is, now, the other thing, when you fix the joint, which it's not moving anymore, um, do, do I lose any motion, or is my body going to be able to tell that? Of course, the whole idea of this of this whole procedure is to limit uh, micro, what I call micro motion, mm -hmm. which in this case you always are supposed to have a little micro motion in that joint. But if you have excessive motion, it leads to the problems like that, like, like you have. So we are limiting that motion. We are twisting. So it's I can not continue to, on what uh, afterwards. You can continue to actually do a lot better because it's not going to hurt. Exactly. You that is true. That's true. Now, speaking of pain, mm -hmm. what about? Post-op pain, how much pain is involved with this? You are going to have some discomfort, especially in the immediate post-op, but it is a different, as a post-operative pain. It's not the same pain as what you had beforehand. Okay. And usually it is not that severe that you cannot get up on the morning or on the afternoon after the surgery. Mm -hmm. We usually do these surgeries first thing in the morning so that, um, and then by the afternoon, usually we try to get you up with physical therapy. And most everyone re responds that uh, most of their preoperative pain is gone, if not all of it. But they still have some of the postoperative pain, but it's much more tolerable for them okay. than the preoperative pain was. And, of course, that's going to lessen. Even by the next morning, that's markedly lessened. I am ready to have this surgery. You've answered my questions, and I think let's just go for it because I am very ready. That sounds good. Extract 2. Questions 13 to 24. For questions 13 to 24, complete the notes with a word or short phrase. You now have 30 seconds to look at the notes. Good morning, I suppose you're George? Yes, yes, and I believe you're Dr. Mark. Oh, yes, I am. What brings you here today? Well, um, I'm having this redness in my, um, in, in the white part of my eye, actually. All right. I think, um, uh, I don't know what it's called, is it called the conjunctiva or something? Mm -hmm. It's quite swollen, and, you know. Um, I see that, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, I've been having more tears than usual, like, you know, it's, um, 
more than tears, I, I think it's, um, you know, sometimes I can feel that it's sort of like a yellow kind of discharge. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. And like, uh, it, 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 I mean, it crusts over the eyelashes, you know, and, you know, w w when I go to sleep, it's not, n during the daytime, it's not really bad, but when I go to sleep and I wake up, you can, you can see that, like, you know, it's quite thick. Do you have any particular sensations there? Uh, it's quite itchy, you know, like, you know, and I feel um, sometimes burning, mm -hmm. um, like, in the eyes, and... Uh, um, and I, I'm not sure it's because of this discharges or whether anything else is happening. I feel like my vision is quite blurred. Um, right. So, um, and I mean, I think I believe the sensitivity to the light has changed as well. Um, like it's um, how do I how do I uh, call it? It's like um, stubby. Stubby. Yeah. And uh, I. Just like you know, don't have anything else. Just these these things, and you know, um, I have um, other allergies and everything. But I don't know whether it is associated with it. All right, allergies, you said. Yeah, yeah. I'm allergic to pollen. Um, um, so okay. dust. Uh, um, like not very much. It's hard to. I mean, pollen is you know it's tested, and you know I am positively allergic to pollen, okay. and you know sometimes I get common cold and like you know. It's Mm -hmm. Not, not like you know, not a lot. Um, you know, so I would, I would love you to do, um, like probably an eye examination, mm -hmm. and you know, we could do just, that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there is a thorough history collection in the laboratory. Yeah. No, so, I, so I believe I'm gonna have to give some blood or something like that. No, and, you don't have to. Yeah. You could dress the shirt. Yeah. Well, we still keep the eyes clean, please. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I'm, I'm pretty like you know, I've, you know, I've, I've had it when I was a child, and you know, I remember, you know, I washed my, um, you know, wash, wash the eyes with clean water, um, and I changed the pillowcases every day, um, like you know, morning, and you know, I'm like you know, I think you know, I have to do until the infection goes away, but you know, it's not my expertise; it's more of your expertise. So, I mean, I do the basic do's and don'ts, and like you know, I. I you know, I, you know, I don't touch both eyes or like you know with, with, with the same same finger or like I don't rub. Right. Um, you know, I just don't like and you know, I don't want to spread it to the other eye as well. So, and hopefully, like last time when it happened, um, you know, they the doctor gave me some eye drops, and you know, um, like it's just it's it's just the regular things I believe. But I, I feel like I'm a bit of a fraud coming in just for a bit. It might be something silly, but. You, know, yeah. you do yeah. the right thing. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So, I would ask you not to put a patch over the eye. Yeah. It might worsen the infection. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. And uh, protect the eyes from dirt. Yeah, yeah. Especially from the irritants you mentioned. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh, did I forget to ask you to take an up rest? Well, um, well, I've not been doing much. Um, you know, I, um, I mean, well, I started off using, uh, like, you know, when it went, like, on the first day, you know, when it happened, I thought, like, oh, I'd just, you know, look at it, and I don't want this to go bad or something. So I used an, uh, I used an over-the-counter eye drop. Um, I tried it to start with, um, and you know, now um, my, like, my vision is a bit blurry. So I, I'm not, you know, watching TV or anything. I'm just giving get a bit of rest and uh, I'd also ask you to stay away from work for a few days if it's okay. Oh well, that's um no, that, that's not really a bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> if you're happy to give me a give me a sick certificate. Um I mean I've, I'm physically feeling really good actually but it's just I don't think it's safe as well. Uh you know, I work um uh, like you know in a in a chemist as well. I mean I'm not a pharmacist though, actually I just you know uh, just read scripts and start things and assist a pharmacist. So I don't think it's safe enough with this condition. I should work. So I'm like, I'm for that, I'll prescribe you some antihistamines as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I think I think that'll be good. I'll probably take some rest and you know take the medications. And uh, uh, do you want me to see me next week, or just you want to know how it goes, or like? How about in four days? Say? Okay. Cool. So I'll try it, and uh, you can if I can work it out, I'll do it. Right, thanks. Thank nice you. meeting you, Doc.
That is the end of part A. Now look at part B.